Okay, so you should know by now that I travel a lot nowadays. Thanks to you guys. Love you all. And throughout my traveling and my own skirmishes, I've come to know what's common to see on the field and in the arenas. And a lot of you guys tell me stuff like how many times you've seen the same gun in just one video. So I thought why not do something different, put together a nice quick countdown together to show off some of the most common or the most overused guns in the airsoft world. Now don't get offended by the term overused because as you'll see, they're probably used so much for a lot of good reasons. And if you're new to airsoft or looking to get into the hobby, then this should be a great watch for you. So let's kick this countdown off by showing off what's at number 10, which easily goes to the JGS System M4. Now I could have started off with the SEMA AK collection or by saying the Mark 18 rifle, but I want to stick to specific guns before modifications. But if we went the route of styles of replicas, then the MK18 would probably take the top spot with not much competition, thanks to the Milsim side of Airsoft alone. And the SEMA AKs would probably be right behind the MK, since they've been pretty much popular for almost a decade now or even more than that. Stores are filled with them, some brands use them as bases for their rifles, SEMA carries just about every common AK variant, and I've even owned one myself. They just work and their prices are pretty darn good. But back to the JGS system. So these things have been around since 2007, and if you go to any field you'll probably still find a few. They were cheap but had metal bodies after 2010, they were easy to find and fields would even buy them up as rentals quite commonly. And you can still snag up one for about $130 to $160. And thanks to a few clones out there, you should be able to find one for pretty cheap. I'd even compare it to being the combat machine of that time. And moving on to number 9, I have another classic, but this one is a lot more known thanks to Bodge Ups, Dayton of the House Gamers, and of course Novrich. Enter the Tokimuri VSR-10. Now honestly, I've only seen maybe 3 true Tokimuri VSRs, but in Europe, they're everywhere, and on the sniper forums, they hold the crown for the most modded and owned rifle. If there was a trophy for the highest selling bolt action, then it probably would go to the VSR-10. Actually, I think it did win a Player's Choice Award, but I can't seem to find any evidence of that. But however, there is a reason why you'll see this rifle in the hands of a lot of scope cam channels, or flickered around the Scout the Doggy videos. And its fame is very evident by all the variations of the rifle, including the very prominent G-Spec. There was even a nickel-plated one that kind of flopped. Okay, it really flopped. Go see the Red Wolf video over it, you'll see what I mean. I'll have a link it down in the description, but it did look really nice in my opinion. I could make a countdown low on VSRs, and that's because the rifle just checks off on all the boxes for a great bull action. Definitely a rifle that will go down history as one of the greatest ever made. But now for a bullpup that you might hate, which is taken at the 8th spot, and that would be the Cybergun FAMAS. This $160 piece is all over the place. I see them at giveaways so often, and you know how many new players pick these up. I've seen shops just filled with parts of these guns and dozens of Cybergun boxes with the FAMAS plastered right on it. It's nothing special on the inside or on the outside, but it's a FAMAS so some gamers might see this as their go-to. But I've always wondered if some of those gamers ever looked back on their old FAMASs and feel grateful for their current setups. But if you're looking to see more about this gun, then be sure to watch a Brain Exploder video over it. I'll leave it in the description down below of course, and you might even get some ideas on how to set yours up. Now I don't hate the Cybergun FAMAS, but it is a newbie gun that helps a lot of people get into the hobby, which is a great thing, so I guess I'm just tired of seeing it everywhere. I don't even hate the FAMAS itself, I wouldn't mind owning the Tokimuri version, but what I really want to see is a high-end model with the same attention to body strength as some of the latest VFC reps. But hey, if you're a bit new to this, then go ahead and look up the Cybergun. But let's get on to the number 7, which goes to a very solid KWA, and it's the good old MP7. Now I like this gas gun a lot, it's been around for so long, and the aftermarket parts are everywhere. And over its lifetime, it switched from being called the KWA MP7 to the Umrex or Elite Force MP7. But everyone knows what it is. Now some people say it's not one on one scale or how the trademarks on it are a bit too bright, but this thing dominates in game. There's a lot of loyal players that run this gun, and as I filmed quite a few of them already, I know when one is nearby as they give a bit of a distinctive sound off to me. I'd say if you're looking at gas bullbacks, then really consider the KWA MP7 as a start, but be prepared to spend some real money because as you'll find out, running gas isn't cheap. This piece alone will run you around $250 to $280. But that's the MP7. Small setup, lots of upgrades, downgrades, and mods available, 40 plus round magazines. The thing's just awesome to own. Now, how about another gun that I rarely ever see in person? At number 6 is the Tokimuri High Kappa, and for good reasons. Just like how the VSR 10 is the prominent bolt action, this would be the prominent pistol for modifications. And in places like California, you can find these in just about every CQB arena. They're used as speedsoft builds, competition guns, target pistols, test beds for new mods, and a couple companies base their own pistols on the High Kappa. Thanks to the pistol countdowns I've done, I've seen some crazy stuff that builders put together, and normally the High Kappas are submitted in droves, which always sweetens the show. 
but from a pistol to a support gun, we have the first and only LMG for this show. And number five, it's the AK M249. Now this is where we get into the real meat and potatoes here. The Cybergun from Austin S System M4 by JG may have not been so popular to find out there, but these top five guns will sure be. You can find this AK in just about every squad at American Milsim Ops, or just about on every local game. And if yours ever goes down for any reason, you can either shop for libraries of parts, or turn it into the perfect base for an HPA gun. The NKM249 does come in a couple variants to fill anyone's preferences, and if you have around 300 to $350, then you can get your suppressive firearm with one yourself. And I believe in thanks to the NKM249's firepower and ammo loadout, that we'll be seeing it for years to come at just about every big event I ever travel to. Except for if I'm filming a local band, or maybe if I'm putting together a skate video. But let's keep the show rolling. It's time to introduce the Crytac CRB at its 4th spot. You expected a Crytac most likely, so here it is. When the Crytac line hit the market, people went straight to their favorite dealers and got theirs as soon as they could, and the rifle that seems to have taken the top spot would be the CRB. Not only does this rifle inherit being an M4 into its popularity, but with the added push from just about every online retailer, the Crytac line has been advertised pretty well. The rifles themselves did start out with some troubles at first internally with a weak piston as I've heard, but after some updates and some added options regarding colors, the line came back pretty strong. Now I myself can't really get behind getting a key mod M4, but then again I'm not really into M4s, I'm more in the classic M16A1s or A4s. And of course my old Cold War reps like my Galils, but I still know some good choices when I see them. But before there was the Crytac, there was a budget GNG line that many fields got behind for their rentals, and that many new players saw as their way to get into the game. And that's the GNG Combat Machine M4, the Honda Civic of Airsoft. <laughs> this has got to be the default beginner gun, and for $150, you can bet it's going to stay that way for a bit longer. I see these every time I go to any field, and they're very popular as rentals all over Texas. And I believe they made a gas blowback version that had an AEG body. So if you wanted to drop a gearbox into it, you could, but I'm not really sure how that works. When it all comes down to it, it's a basic M4, no rails besides on top, battery goes into the foreguard, and you have a retractable stock, and to keep the cost low, the body is made from polymer. But you do get a full metal gearbox that's super easy to mod and take apart. Oddly enough, I do see a few people who never get rid of their old combat machines, but instead continuously mod them to outperform much more expensive and high-end systems out there. But I guess if you have the skills, then enjoy it. Besides, it's kind of funny seeing some of those sleeper combat machines take out cocky players. But these would be the first-gen combat machines. I did a review a while ago on the newer models, which I did really like. So if you're really thinking about getting into Airsoft on a budget, then here's your greatest option. And if you end up not liking Airsoft, then I'm sure you can probably get a field to buy it off of you. But now for one more M4 type rifle. But this one replicates a German born rifle. And it's the pretty much the gold standard for Milsim games. And that's the VFC 416 CQB. Now I really shouldn't need to say anything here, but let me explain why I think the VFC is so popular. Maybe because it's built like a building and the real rifle is extremely popular with the military. Thus, it's popular with weapons enthusiasts. It's no secret that a lot of VFCs are rock solid, and I know that myself since, if you remember, I kinda won a Polar Start M27. Oh, and that's another thing. The 416 CQB may even be the most popular gun to turn into an HPA gun, or at least rank up in the top five. And since the Polar Start Fusion engine was built around a VFC body, you get an easy installation that will make up a solid build. I even know a few people that bought 416s just to turn them into HPA systems. Some didn't even field them, they just ripped out the stock internals immediately. But I do understand why. If I'm sure slamming a hammer multiple times in my M27 wouldn't do anything to drastically harm the body, then I want internals that are pretty much the same. So if you ask me what's a great gun for Milsim Ops or for extended ownership and life, then it would be the 416 CQB, even though I myself like the M27 IAR more. But whatever. The VFC 416 CQB, solid, dependable, long-lasting, and an airsoft icon. Now, before this sounds more and more like a truck commercial, let's end this off at number one, and you may have guessed it by now. But if not, then here it is. I believe the Elite Force 1911 TAC is the most popular and the most common, or the most overused gun in airsoft. Now, as I did write this script, I did realize that some of the picks may be completely off from where you live, so let me put this out there. I live in Texas, and I travel to all the states that neighbor me. But when I opened polls for this list, people made it clear that they see these way too much. But here's why there's so many. Well, the Elite Force 19 runs on a proven KWC CO2 system, an easy to use gas system that gives this pistol outstanding reliability in comparison to what was available at that time. And when I reviewed the gray version, I was able to get 60 to 70 shots off with just one CO2 magazine fill. When you need it, you need to depend on your sidearm to perform to get yourself out of a pinch or to clear a structure, 
and I'd prefer to have a CO2 piece in my holster than a green gas one at any time now. But you will need to clean it out a bit more, but the dependability is worth it, and the price tag of an Elite Force 9011 is great at around $120. And to top it all off, if you ever need parts to replace anything or attack to get it back up and running, then you'll have web pages of replacement parts to go through. And you do also get a good warranty right out of the box. Saying anything more about number 2 and number 1 would be redundant now, but to get an idea, for pure body strength and HPA builds, it's the VFC416. And for a pistol with controls we all should know, the CQB Legal FPS, and a cheap price to boot, then it's the Elite Force 1911 TAC. And that's pretty much it guys, that's my top 10 and I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to comment down below what's really popular near you, either being in a field or an arena setting, or why you like or dislike one of the guns on today's show. Also be sure to like this video, or share it around, or even subscribe for more of these countdowns. And also I'd like to thank those who submitted their builds for this count, and I'd like to thank Beats by Neister supplying his music once again. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Holmbeck, and I'll be sure, like always, to see you all next time.